Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel um, where today I'm back um, with part three of my regrettable or what the hell was I thinking buying that tarot deck purchases. Um, a little disclaimer before I start, um, I obviously haven't come on here to be unkind or be disrespectful to anyone, um, this is just my own personal opinion um, and this is what I think and you know... Uh, we all have our opinions on something, so this is mine. Um, so these are some of the decks I've had over the, f well, past few years, some more recently than others. Um, I'm actually going through my deck collection at the moment, thinking about what I can actually part with. Um, a lot have already gone, and these are some more that are going in the boxes to go as well. Um, so I thought I'd uh, come on today to show you what I've actually decided to part with. Well, around, oh, I think it was about 10 years ago or so now, um, when I used to be on Facebook, but I'm not on Facebook anymore, and I haven't been for about seven years, um, there was a huge resurgence in the Lenormand. And of course, everybody had their own opinion, and everybody says, oh, you shouldn't do it this way, it should be done that way, blah, blah, blah. And it got a bit boring, and obviously egos got involved, um, and like, but there was a huge resurgence in decks, and I mean huge resurgence in decks. I mean, there was people creating decks all the time, um, some good, some not so good. Um, some should have been left well, very well and truly on the drawing board. And these are two that I have never, ever kind of connected with in any way. So the first one is the Pagan, because all the Normans obviously have got to have a theme, like tarot decks. Um, and this was kind of annoying at the time. Um, I've been reading the Norman for over 30 years and only had one little deck and I still got it. And I didn't know, even know it was called Blue L, Blue L the Normand. Um, and I didn't even know any others existed. Um up until, as I said, 10, 11 years ago. Um, this was one of the first, uh, when was this actually done? Uh, I can't even remember, to be honest, I'll have a look. This is the Pagan Lenormand, um, and it's by Gina M. Pace, an artwork by Franco Rivoli. Um, because at the time I was kind of into like kind of an earth-based path and I thought, you know what, it's gonna be cool. I'll just, you know, have a look at it and stuff, see what it's like. But, first of all, Los Scarabayo do not do very successful Lenormand decks. For a start off, they are hugely oversized. Um, you know, you can't. it's impossible unless you've got like the, anything the size of a football pitch to do um, a 36 card grand tableau on there. Um, you just can't. Um, this is a Los Scarabayo recent Lenormand deck, however, and this is the Grand Tableau Lenormand cards, and this is absolutely perfect because this is the traditional size of a Lenormand card. So, obviously, you can see how huge they are. They are more like Oracle cards, and all the rest of the Los Scarabayo ones I've had over the years are all the same. Uh, it's kind of like huge card stock. So, this was a deal breaker as soon as I actually got the cards. Um, now, onto the cards, of course it's based on paganism and stuff, and you do get all the familiar Lenormand cards in it, but you know what, why, you know, why have you got like four people at the bottom, clouds is clouds, and you know, there shouldn't be added, added you know, any other people in there really, as far as I'm concerned, um, there's another four people on here as well, um, so yeah, it's very, very, very mixed style of artworks. It's very, it's very hit and miss for me. I mean, some people might love it, um, but I actually don't. Um, and I think this is the first time in years that I've actually opened the box of the deck again. Um, because, you know, it's just like, I don't know, you know, I mean, why, you know, you've got to ask yourself, why are those people sitting down there writing stuff um, when the card's supposed to be the heart? So take those people away, take those wings away and those flowers and you've got a heart. Um, I'm a bit of a traditionalist in the Lenormand, so I don't actually like any added symbolism in any of the decks at all. Um... You know, that's obviously the storm, which is Stonehenge. Uh, but no, um, this really wasn't a deck um, I have ever, ever, ever connected with or ever would. Um, 
And then obviously as time's gone by, people have added different cards, like two men, two women, da 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 da. Um, and my personal opinion is it's just totally unnecessary. Um, you know, so uh, each to their own, I suppose. But yeah, there's my first one. And next one for the chop. And that is the Pagan Lenormand cards, um, which is still very much available. The second one of my Lenormand purchases, and I know you're going to think, oh my God, but this is the Gilded Reverie Lenormand by Chiro Marchetti. Of course, he got to jump on the bandwagon. Um, and there's an extra expanded edition of this now with extra added cards, um, which nobody ever uses, as far as I'm concerned. Um <sighs> I don't know, you know, the size isn't too bad, uh, I don't suppose. It's still too big for a Lenormand card, you know. Um, why have they got to be so big? I have no idea. Um, you know, leave them to the standard size, what they're supposed to be. Um, this is very Ciro, Ciro Marchetti style. It's also incredibly busy. Um... There's far too much even going on here for me. But I know people absolutely adore this wet, uh, this deck. Don't get me wrong. The artwork is absolutely beautiful. But to me, what do you look at in there if you're not an Norman reader? And your base or the coffin. Or this kind of stuff underneath the coffin. So, yeah. Um, you know, do you look at the, the barn or the fox? Um what exactly is that child uh, trying to convey, you know? So, yeah. Um, and the tree of life as well in a, just a normal... See, this is just a standard, you know, for, let me find... There you go. That's what I've always been used to. And sometimes, you know, with Lenormand, less definitely is more, guys. Um, so you've just got a tree there. And you've got a tree with a tree of life and a rainbow and mushrooms and birds in the trees and to me that is just totally unnecessary this is another one i have never read with um it's been in the box for years um so yeah you can kind of see like it's as i said it's very uh Chiron marchetti style um but yeah um sadly not for me but i have seen this a lot and i know a lot of readers like kind of resonate with this kind of style but not for me, guys. Um, so that's the second one that's going. Now, the third one, we have a tarot deck. Um, well, it's not. It, it's really not. Um, it's called the Psychic Tarot Oracle Deck. So, is it a tarot? Is it an oracle deck? It's a 65-card deck and guidebook by John Holland, who I think was a medium or is a medium. This is a very kind of old AOS deck um, from about 2010, I think. Or, or even before that, um, it may have been. And when I bought it, I thought, you know, I mean, I, you know, something new, I think. And I was kind of excited to see something new. But it does not work like a tarot deck at all. Um, it's just like really kind of like, I don't know, uh, 2007. So this is absolutely years old. It's kind of like taken all everything out. It's tried to like force... Um, you know, spirit violet border, um, mental indigo border, um, then emotions green border and physical red border. So obviously he's doing the cups, you know, the four suits of the tarot and he goes from one to nine. There's no tens, there's no court cards, but there's added chakra cards, which I also find extremely odd as well. Um, so this again i've seen like over the years on social media a lot i suppose it's because it's got keywords on it which is nothing wrong with that absolutely nothing um but it's the whole kind of like i don't know you know it's pretending to be a tarot deck but it's really not a tarot deck it's basically an oracle deck this is marketed as a tarot deck so completely pointless really i mean there's nothing wrong with the artwork the artwork's kind of nice really um but yeah, I think the black cards are meant to be the mages of the tarot. Um, but yeah, it's it's nothing I kind of like, you know, pull out for readings or anything like that because it's too like simplified. Um, you know, it's very kind of non-offensive and it's played very very safe. Um, you know, positive movement forward and, and stuff like this. You know, the the hierophant, the, the wisdom card. 
third eye chakra and destiny that's absolutely vile um but yeah i mean it, it is you know it is what it is it's another simple deck that was produced by aos back in the day this is still available and, and there's, a, there's a, a companion deck to it called the psychic heart tarot and that also isn't a tarot card system either so this is my third one right now wait till you see this one don't ask me why i even bought it okay um because i have no idea um it was a spur of the moment purchase i think it was on offer on amazon and these are the crystal oversoul oversoul cards by michael eastwood and it's attunements for light workers okay so 66 healing cards and book so it comes in this lovely book box royal okay then so awaken to your true self so this is everything really that i don't believe in highly revered within the temples of lemuria the crystal kingdom holds keys to accelerate our awakening pro awakening process these 66 stunning crystal mandalas help you to attune to and communicate with the energies of the ancient crystal oversouls. Each card depicts a photographic mandala featuring a different crystal that conveys messages directly into the consciousness of the viewer. For each oversoul, you find an attunement to meditation or visualization to immerse you in the higher energies of the oversouls and the crystal kingdom. The book also provides an access to 22 downloadable audio meditations. Okay, so you get this really lovely kind of gorgeous box and this incredible guidebook. Let me show you first. So you've got all these cards on this lovely card stock and they have just got things like Champagne Aura, Muscovite, Isis Quartz, Price of colour, you get the meaning all the way through. Okay, I've got no book, I've got no access to any audio file. How do I use them? I have no idea. Um no, you just you just cannot use these without the book. Um yeah, the pictures are stunningly pretty. It looks like one of them kaleidoscope things we used to look through when we was kids um but like i mean what you know you you couldn't read with these unless you knew all 66 I and mean, then that's a hefty lot of crystals and the properties to learn about um so unless you knew all of the crystals inside out i mean how would you use these in readings um and i'll tell you what i mean exactly by it so and i'm not being ignorant because i have actually tried the meditation and I thought okay let's try these meditations you know see how it is and things like that absolute rubbish um you know it's another kind of new age um theory going on about you know there's even added chakras in this deck and you know I mean who's going to stand there going to take a card out anywhere and Put it, you know, in the middle of the wilderness with all those clear quartz crystals where you you, know, you might not even have any. Um, and, I'm, you know, Lemurian crystals are really expensive anyway. So, you know, preparing yourself for a crystal oversoul meditation and it goes on and on and on. Um, so, okay, Agioite, which I'd never heard of. It represents the ninth chakra element star for a grid. You need 12 points of this. I don't know where these people actually think that we're going to get this money from to buy these like rare crystals anyway. Um, and you can light some frankincense, sandalwood, benzoin, rose, absolute. And it's on the full moon. Um, and it said, Agilite's colouring and character reminds us of our ancient Remurian light. For some of us, this is a painful memory. As in subsequent lives after Lemuria, this light was misunderstood and many were per persecuted. You know what? I can't even be bothered to go on um, because it's just complete new age nonsense. So, yes, this was a purchase on a whim. Um, 
one of the worst purchases that I've had in recent years, I should have said, you know, but uh, yeah, you know, we, we learn by our mistakes, hopefully. So that one is very much for the charity box. Um, okay, now the next one I've got is a beautiful, um, the artwork is absolutely beautiful. Um, and I think because I haven't got the box anymore, I do have the guidebook, however, and I think this is called the Mystical Dream Tarot or the Mystical Dreamers Tarot, something like that. And like when I saw the artwork and I thought, oh, that looks really cool. You know, I might buy this. I think I've had this two or three years now. And then it come and I looked through the cards and I thought, you know what? I cannot get absolutely anything from these cards whatsoever. It doesn't follow a Rider Waite Smith system um, or any kind of system, really. I find it like an incredibly odd kind of deck um you know obviously that's got no thoth system in it or any tarot de marseille or any rider white smith so okay and as much as i appreciate the concept and the you know the person beyond the the decks and everything like that you know sometimes i think it's sometimes necessary like to stick with like tradition so you, you know you, at least your deck will sell um it just doesn't like kind of like read very well. I have used it a couple of times, but obviously it's very guidebook heavily, you know, again. And so, yeah, it's a shame because the artwork is lovely. I love the color palette um, and everything like that. And, but like, you know, as for a workable deck, I mean, some people might love it. I mean, leave me a comment if you've got it and use it. I'd love to know what you do with it. Um, but yeah, as for a workable debt for me personally, it's a no. So this, when I can find the guidebook, actually, um, this is another one that's going. Um, so yeah, um, shame really because the artwork is lovely, but as a deck, no from me. Right, okay. Now what have we got? Um, this was I. You didn't think you know I'm coming on here today and just moaning about all these decks, but honestly, I'm just giving my opinion. I'm not trying to be like horrible towards anyone. Um, this is, you know, this one, I, had, I actually had a bag for it as well. Please don't ask me why. Um, this is the Book of Shadows Tarot um, by Barbara Moore. This is volume one as above, and it's a complete mess of a deck. Um, it's gone, kind of been forced into fit the, uh, right, okay. The Book of Shadows is a very personal journey kept by many witches, Wiccans and practitioners of neo-paganism as a record of their mystical and spiritual journey, including ritual practices, spells, tarot readers, crystals, and astrological studies. Um, so, what has she done here? The deck was designed to hold and express modern pagan spiritual teachings or Wicca. Um, they're both different. Uh, so, these beliefs are broad and not all unified by any systematic code indeed. Wicca is a religion, if it can be called so, but personal and not a, for a congregation, in which each person is encouraged to live it rather than follow it. Um, do you have to be initiated into Wicca? Um, so... This is another one for me. I thought, you know, where are they getting, the, you know, the resources from? Um, and they're all very kind of like the full starts off as the Summerlands, um, which basically is a place uh, where um, some traditions think that you, what you go and you pass over. And then you've got the elements, wisdom, the goddess, the god. And you know what? It is a complete mess of a deck. Um it doesn't make no sense whatsoever. Um, you've got planets in here as well. Let me just show you what I mean. Um, it's like just trying to be forced to be cool, I think. Um, right, eight. it's not red either in any kind of traditional sense. Um, so you've got salamanders as the fire element. And then you've got 10, earth, 9, air. The summerlands, which is the fall. Um five water you've got elementals there um so can you say what i mean there's uh, there's nothing wrong with the artwork the artwork could work incredibly well you know but it's just bloody horrible um for a start off what she did was um the pagan festivals um 
you know, why is Lamas the devil? Um, why is, uh, there is some more on you, just flicking through quickly so you can see. Uh, um, let me just go through, Mabon, Yule, 13, which is death, um, I suppose that kind of, I don't know, wouldn't, shouldn't that really be Samhain, you know? Um, th that's what I'm saying, and you got Samhain as the moon, um, so, no, why? Um, oh, I don't know, so, you can see what I mean, it's just a complete mess, and there's all kinds of, like, different cultures and different cultural belief systems added in here, so it's like a real shit show of a deck. So, um, this is one, um, I think I might have had this give me, I wouldn't have bought this, I'm sure somebody must have gifted it me years ago or something. Um, I do, however, have the Book of Shadows Volume 2, and that's much better and much more easily used. Um, so, yeah, you know, that's one for the charity, um, along with the bag. So somebody's going to get themselves a nice little uh, kind of gift, isn't they? A bargain. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's another one. And uh, I don't actually see this deck around very much anyway. Okay, now the next one I bought myself, um, another kind of like impulse purchase. And these are the Labyrinth Wisdom cards by Tony Christie. And not, no, it's not Tony Christie the singer. Um, it's some guy who lives in Ireland. Um, it says, the labyrinth is an ancient symbol of wholeness and the path of the labyrinth represents our journey in life. Um, so, yeah. So what do you get? This is self-published, I think. Um, I haven't seen. I think I got it from his website, and you know, I was just like, really thought I want, you know, something different and stuff like that. But it's just, you know, okay. You've got a keyword at the top and a little thing at the bottom. Things may seem difficult right now. Be brave and face your fears. So you've got bravery. I think what puts me off um, with the deck, I think it's the artwork on this one. Because there's, there isn't really much like wrong with the messages. Um, shadow side, acknowledge your shadow side, embrace it and learn with it. Awareness, you are op you are at a gateway, open yourself to awareness. So I think if the creator had actually had um, a better artist, I think it could have been a really lovely deck. It's kind of a missed opportunity. Um, you know, I mean, there's I mean, the guidebook's all right, actually. I mean, it's pretty, you know, you it's called a handbook, not a guidebook. Um, so on this one, you get like 80, 70 something pages. So you can kind of like, you know, there's lots in, you know, additional notes on some cards, and he gives the explanation on why some of the artworks on here. There's like a kind of Greek mythology in it as well. So the concept is brilliant. Um, but it's just the artwork, I'm afraid. It's just a little bit too much on the naive side for me. And you've got these, like, kind of, like, you know. I mean, it's, you know, it's very non-offensive and it's very fun. And, you know, you can't, you know, I'm not an artist, so I can't judge anybody's standards of ability. Um, But I'm just saying, you know, if it, if it had been, like, different, I would have probably kept it. Actually, um, now seeing it again... It's kind of got this endearing quality, so I may just hang on to this one. Um, don't ask me why, um, because I really don't need it. Um, but I'm kind of thinking, yeah, you know what, it ain't that bad after all. And so I think sometimes as well, it's like, you know, showing you guys these decks on here and just basically grabbing what I've got and then revisiting them after all these years. Um, I kind of think, oh, you know why, it ain't too bad really. So, yeah, this is a maybe keeper. Um, but if anybody is interested, it is the Labyrinth Wisdom cards anyway. Um, I, got, I don't know how much they were. I think there was about, like, £12 or something. I had them a few years ago now. And you can get them directly from Tony Christie's website. As I said, I'll repeat again, it's not the Tony Christie the singer. So, yeah, that's the Labyrinth Wisdom cards. Now, the next deck I've got is a total, complete missed opportunity. Um, this is the Harmony Tarot by Harmony Nice. Um, 
This was originally published by Ryder, and I think it's now US Games. Um, I'm not quite sure. Um, it's said a deck for growth and healing, and you get a lovely little tiny guidebook look. Um, and then obviously the names of the, you know the meanings of all the cards it does um kind of veer away from standard kind of uh, tarot definitions but that wasn't a problem for me because you've only got to look in the guidebook um i absolutely love the style of artwork the watercolors um and you've got like the backs of people really so you've got the king of autumn the queen of autumn and i thought this is a really pretty deck um until however i got on to the miners i have no problem at all with pip decks i learned with pip decks i still use pip decks in my own personal practice but when you've got cards like this three and this four you really really do have to scrutinize what the difference is between the two um and as i'm looking on these oh yeah you can just about see it so there look the buds are closed and there look the flowers are opening so that's the difference and it is the same all throughout the miners where you totally have to scrutinize what's going in the card they are all very very repetitive um see as you can see with that one um the six to the eight um you know the flowers have opened more so if you can see down towards the bottom of the stem um as opposed to that one but no um it's such a shame um i just think this is one time where i will say that the pips um the miners are have been done incredibly lazily um as opposed to the the, the majors and so this is such a shame because as i said this deck is a total missed opportunity because it could have been something so much more um and i'm afraid um i think i used it i may have reviewed it once on my instagram a couple of years ago um but it's been in the box ever since um so i mean it's lovely as well the card stock's nice and durable it's on a lovely mat um and it may appeal to some people because like there's a deck out there for, you know for everybody but you know be warned guys it does take some like kind of looking at what if these wasn't on the bottom if the roman numerals wasn't on the bottom you would have no idea at all how to read that card because there's one two three four five on that one yeah there is um is the 10 on there one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there is um but the thing is when you've got doing somebody a reading do you really want to count how many flower reds there are on a bush no i didn't think you would um so yeah there you go and obviously some cards are quite busy so like you've been thinking oh my god you know how many flower reds on that you know we have to get my magnifying glass and counting with my fingers so that is a shame because it is a total missed opportunity and for that that is also going to the charity shop um so yeah it's a shame really but um there you go it's just one of them in it right okay now this is another deck this is actually an oracle deck um and this is by rock paul it's one of the very few rock paul decks that i'm not keen on um and this is the astral realms crystal oracle by prism and fleur um there you go there's the box so you've got this beautiful kind of rose gold copper gilding around the, the side with 36 cards and then you've just got pictures of crystals and you've got emerald the card number the kind of cognizance the keyword and then mercury um so to be honest with you i have never used them in a reading at all um i can't honestly say how they read but they're a bit too kind of like i don't know a bit too oversimplified and you know just a picture of a, a crystal in the middle of a card i think it's a bit lazy um you know trust pearl palace ammonite um yeah okay see this is another one unless you like really really versatile upon your crystals and astrology 
how could you get like kind of introspection from that card um, and things like, you know, insight from that card? If you're an intuitive reader, you couldn't. I mean, please correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I mean, I don't understand it. Um, so, yeah, it's a shame. Um, it could have been so much better. Uh, but like, I mean, the cards are very aesthetically pretty, very Instagrammable, very for use on TikTok for all you influencers out there. Um, but like, yeah, it does absolutely nothing for me at all. So for that one, that one's going in the charity as well. And that's the Astral Realms Crystal Oracle. Now my last one is the Journey to Enlightenment Tarot. A new tarot for alchemical transformation. When I saw this deck, uh, when it arrived, I thought, oh, that's great, you know, something different, something that thinks outside the box. Um, but you know what? I'll show you. It is so busy. It gives you a headache. Um, it comes with a little guidebook, which I'm not going to read. Um, but wait till you see the cards. It is incredibly busy. Um, so... Oh, it's just mad. It's like a, a bad psychedelic trip. Um, even though some of the colours, I love vibrancy and I love collage art. But like, I mean, sometimes, I mean, come on. You can just barely make out that ice on there because there's so much going on on the cards. Um, it's not a bad deck. I mean, please don't, you know, think it, that I think it's horrible because it's not. It's just really, really incredibly busy. Um, oh God, you know, it's just one of the, <laughs> one of them decks you're thinking, Jesus, I'm going to have the headache in a minute. It's just like, I mean, fair play to the artist. Um, she must be an incredible artist to do this kind of artwork. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, overload of information to put it, uh, mildly. I think that's the, the the only card where there's less on it. Because I don't, I, there's another one as well. I ain't opened it for a couple of years. You can just about make out the figures in that five of ones. Um, can you say? Because you, your eyes are all over the place. Um, and to do this, as I said, like, you know, another one. Yeah, you would be able to make out the two of pentacles without any keyword, you know, out any title thing on the bottom. But it's blooming hard, especially if, you know short-sighted or or something like that it's just like a nightmare um you know to be like an horror movie doing a great big spread with his deck um so uh yeah it's a shame because uh i bet they look incredible on canvases or something like that um but shrunk down to fit into a tarot deck there's too much going on um but yeah i mean that that is the journey to enlightenment tarot i think that's still available now it's published by Watkins um so yeah there you go and uh now the more I'm looking through this one the more I'm kind of thinking it's got to go I'm not going to keep this one but yeah I mean you can see like the vibrancy and the colors and it's incredibly like kind of like beautiful in a, in a strange kind of way um but it doesn't work for me as a tarot deck I'm afraid so somebody might like strike lucky and find this and absolutely love it because it does deserve some love. Um, but there, and um, that's it for today. I think I'm just looking around. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you for part watching part three. I'm sure there'll be a part four and five as well. Um, but I thought I'd jump on this afternoon and uh, do part three because I know people have been saying to me, "Oh, Martin, when are you doing another one?" So. I decided to drop drop by today. So thank you for watching. Um, I hope you all have a lovely day, um, lovely evening, wherever you are. And I will see you all very soon. Thank you for all the love and support. And I will see you shortly. Bye.